Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're so excited to have you here today for our webinar series this month, where we're going to be showing you how to turbocharge your practice with eClinicalWorks analytics features. Today, we are spotlighting the safety and compliance dashboard. And then just as a reminder, we are meeting again next Thursday to discuss the MIPS dashboard and the provider hub. Then in our last webinar of this series, we're gonna focus on the PM analytics and EBO reporting. So we hope you can join us for all three, but if not, don't worry, we are recording each of those sessions so they will be available on demand. Your speakers today include me, Caitlin Hausman. I'm the marketing and communications manager here at Ravel, and I'm gonna be the organizer for the webinar. Presenting, we have my colleague, Meredith Angel, Meredith is a certified eClinical Works trainer at Ravel, so she has a lot of experience working with practices just like yours and helping them maximize their use of eClinical Works to improve workflows, adopt new features, and overall just optimize for the future. Now, if you're new to our webinars, you might be wondering who we are, why we're talking about eClinical Works. Um, if you don't recognize the name Ravel, you may recognize our former name, Group One Health Source. We actually had rebranded just last year to create a more unified culture and brand across all of our global offices and really align that messaging with who we are and what we do. Uh, we're a global team. We're truly passionate about simplifying the business of medicine, and that's a pretty bold mission but we've been in business for over 25 years now, and we've really seen how complicated healthcare reimbursement and policies have become. So we've really set out to make all of that easier for our customer base. We've helped um, a number of eClinical Works users fix a lot of the problems that keep healthcare professionals up at night. A lot of practices turn to Revell when they've had it with unnecessary write-offs and denials or maybe they're spending countless hours trying to make sense of multiple reports, or they just don't have the resources or expertise to stay ahead of, of industry changes or eClinical Works updates. We know that's pretty common, right? We have here at Ravel, without a question, some of the most professional and knowledgeable eClinical Works and revenue cycle experts. Our clients tell us that those extensive resources have really been a game changer for their practice. So if any of this sounds familiar, we would really love to hear from you and learn more about your practice. You can visit our website and get in touch with us, or you can reply to the follow-up email that we're gonna send out later today with that recording, and we will get back to you today. So it's a little bit about us, why we're presenting on eClinical Works Analytics today. And we do have a few housekeeping items I wanna mention before I hand it over to Meredith. You'll have a Q&A box on your screen, so we really encourage you to use that throughout the webinar. And then at the end of the webinar, we'll take a look at any of those questions that have come in and try to answer as many as we can. The webinar is also being recorded. I know we get that question all the time. Uh, we'll send that out in the email later today, so just keep an eye out for that and simply reply if you wanna get in touch with us to learn more. So now I think I'm gonna hand it over to you, Meredith, and you can teach us how the safety and compliance dashboard works and how our listeners can use that to really turbocharge their practice. Awesome, thank you, Caitlin, and thank you everybody for joining. All right, good, you can see my screen here. So I'm actually going to go back to my resource schedule to begin with. So the safety and compliance dashboard is really meant for your administrators and maybe a few extra people to be able to view key metrics in your system. To get started, I'm going to go through a couple of just administrative things with the safety and compliance dashboard because it is a security setting. So the administrator of your practice should be able to see it because they normally have most of the security, if not all of the security attributes here. However, if you wanted any additional users to be able to access the dashboard, it is under security settings and you can just search safety and compliance dashboard and give that access to any of your users that you want to be able to go into the dashboard and monitor those KPIs. You can see I'm working in the e-platform of eClinicalWorks, but the 
Safety and Compliance Dashboard is available in your EXE platform as well. The workflow to get there is a little bit different. You'll find it under Reports and Report Console. However, for our presentation, I'm going to stay in this E platform. As I said, the administrator, of course, will have access to it, and it lives under Analytics, Safety and Compliance Dashboard. A broad overview, you can see there are five different categories here as well as a six system configurations at the bottom. With our filters at the top, we can hide zero value KPIs. So if you have KPIs that are at zero, which is generally a good thing, you don't wanna see anything that needs reviewed or any outstanding referrals, you can hide those to focus on those KPIs that need attention. To our right, we have another option to sort by KPI categories, percent change of our KPIs, if the target is reached or not reached, and I will get into setting those targets in a second. You can also search for a particular KPI. So if you just wanna see referrals, you have those options below. To the right, we also have, get off my, Tea jelly bean. We also have the ability to view all KPIs or only view your watch list KPIs. So all KPIs would display everything, whereas your watch list, you can set how you want to view it. And to go into my watch list, click the settings gear, and you can see your six total categories here with the ability to check and uncheck if you want to keep particular ones on your watch list. To minimize you know, what's important to you, um, you'll always have the ability to go back to all KPIs. So it's not like you'll be deleting anything. Along with the watch list KPIs, there's the, the ability to set alerts. And alerts are messages that will go to your administrator to their M Jelly Bean. So if you as the administrator want to receive, you can see we've set a couple up here, but I've set one up that if our open telephone encounters are greater than one, which I agree is a very low threshold, the administrator will receive a message to their M Jelly Bean. So to set one, you simply click on the list of your KPIs, scroll to those that you want to see. Um, so I'm gonna pick here, let's pick out going referrals. Select the rule. So if I wanna see it when they're greater than 10, let's say. A little odd you just select na for that one but then you can see it's added to my list and as the admin of the system i'll receive an m jelly bean message notifying me when those refer outgoing referrals are greater than 10 and that's 10 total in the system all right i'm going to save this for now and move on into, they've added some enhancements to this safety and compliance dashboard. So under this pencil, we can actually create new categories. So if you wanted to put any of these items into a different category, you can see we have health maintenance and best practice and help training at the top. You can reorganize and even add categories. So to add a new category, you would simply click add category. Maybe I just wanna set one that's called prescription. And let's save it.
and you can move these around. So if I want to move prescriptions to the bottom, perhaps since it's one that I added, I don't want to see it at the very top. You can move that below by simply clicking on the compass arrows here and dragging it below your other categories. There we go. I'm working on my smaller screen, so it's a little bit difficult to get it underneath. Good, and then if you wanted to move one of these options, so if I wanted to take you know, my all custom meds prescribed and move it up to my health maintenance, I check it off and simply click and drag. Very simple there. This arrow that you see, anytime you see this, and it will be within multiple screens of the safety and compliance dashboard, but it's a way to export either in Excel or you'll see when we dive into some of these KPIs, you may also export the graph view of it. So going back and you can see over here to the left, it says run my watch list. I'm gonna go back to all of my KPIs and dive into the features of each individual key performance indicator here. So going into open referrals, if I click into this by simply clicking on the bubble, you can see the graph, graphical data here. So down at the bottom, we have our compass that the previous period is all in gray. Our last 180 days are in blue and our regression line, if anything's lowered, as well as our target. Now for this particular category, I don't have a target set, but we will get into that with another one. So to view the data, you can only view the last data point, so today's date, but by clicking into it, you can see it opens up our chart of who has open referrals. So this would be your open referrals by provider. So if I wanted to see my list of patients, Um, sorry, with this one, you can only see the graphical view and switch back to the tabular view. However, you can send a message to the providers that have open referrals. So by clicking on this, I can send one to myself, to Morgan, and to our miscellaneous provider in the system, or just to those two compose messages. And this, again, is going to your M Jelly Bean. So that message would simply go to their M Jelly Bean and they would, you know, be alerted. Hi, Meredith and Morgan, you have open, you know, you have two open referrals. Please um, address these and reconcile. And you could send it. So getting back out into our settings to set targets, which would be that green trend line that we see on our graph. You have to go into the settings gear. And with this, users have it's an item key, first of all. So you would have to have this item key enabled in your system to even have this settings gear. But furthermore, only one person usually can be activated to control these target settings. So we recommend that it's in your administrator because these target settings are practice wide, therefore. Only one person should be setting them. On this target field, you can see my list of KPIs. So I'm going to go to Unlocked Encounters. And you can see each line item has a, you know, the different fields of daily, monthly, and yearly targets, category to display, and then our edit pencil, which is what we're going to go into. So the edit will open up what our targets are and what we want them to to be set at so for my daily target i'm going to set my unlocked encounters to i'm going to keep it low um to three monthly target you know we're going to keep that at 10 and yearly target we still want to keep this low because we don't want to have unlocked encounters in our system so i'll make this at most our 15. we can set it to refresh the kpi 
which means that our chart will show a particular date range. However, you can see to the red, it's indicated that this date range can only be set to three years at maximum. So I'm gonna set it, I'm just gonna set it to the from the from the first of this year. And we're gonna save that. Good, so you can see my daily, monthly, and yearly target fields are now set. So when I go back into my safety and compliance dashboard, just by clicking you know, your gray safety and compliance dashboard button at the top. And I'm gonna go to all KPIs and search for unlocked encounters. Of which my system actually has 110, but we're down 2%. So now you can see each data point will list my target value. So each day I have a target value of three for this particular field. And that also auto populates to our top left here. And diving into my most recent date, you can see a list by facility. And by clicking on the facility, I can then dive into each provider to see how many each particular provider in my system has. And again, we can go back to facilities, we can view this in a tabular way, and the tabular view is how you are able to send messages to these providers. So unlocked encounters is usually a pretty big one. So we can send a message to those providers that have unlocked encounters and ask them to get them closed out. Um, at the top right here, we have you know, the all days tab. And then again, anytime we see that upper right arrow here, we can export to Excel. We can export the image. We can go back to facilities here and again, compose those messages. Along with unlocked encounters, it's a little bit um, kind of outside of the realm of the safety and compliance dashboard, but one um, huge report that we highly, highly recommend you run is under billing encounters. And this of course has to do with your unlocked encounters because we're looking for progress notes incomplete. And by running this from here, so this is encounters and encounters without claims report. So really you're looking at all of the encounters in your system that don't currently have a claim created for them. From which you can see the list, copy this list out. You are also able to go into the progress notes to see, you know, was this actually an encounter or did the patients perhaps cancel this appointment and we need to update it on the resource schedule instead. So you are able to view the progress notes from this screen. So again, a little bit off track with the safety and compliance dashboard, but those two features of ECW really play hand in hand with monitoring your encounters without claims to make sure that you are locking and billing in a timely manner. Good. Um, and lastly, so our main um, sort of KPIs are at the top here. So they're listed in these bubbles, but something that is often overlooked on the safety and compliance dashboard are your system configurations. So what these are going to do are really tell you what your system is set at. So this includes item keys, security features, as well as you know your practice default settings in your system. So I'm only showing about six here, but if I go to the settings gear, you can see that we have the ability to add more here. And actually, I'm not sure if I all these got unchecked. But our system configurations will auto update based on what is set in our system. So the permission to delete after RX 
reconciliation. This is a security setting. And what the number indicates is how many users in your system have that particular security setting. This is actually a practice default. So again, since we have it set to um, be enabled from our practice default, the ability to add the same prescription twice, it's telling us that under our system configuration. So these automatically pull based on your particular system settings. Normally with your guys's dashboards, if you get into this, you're gonna have a lot more numbers that populate. Um, this is our trainer, it's a training data set. So it, we don't have real patients in here, of course. Um, and our data is obviously a lot more minimal, minimal than what you guys will see in yours. Caitlin, do we have any questions coming in so far? No, I'm not seeing. Oh, here's a few. Uh, okay. One of the questions here is, can I set an alert to be sent to administrator for open actions as example by specific provider? So the alert is really um, a practice wide alert. Unfortunately, there's no filter here to say I only want to see, you know, this provider if they have open telephone encounters or if they have open unlocked encounters. Um, it really would be more of a system wide alert. Well, it looks like we're getting some more questions here. Yeah, if anyone has questions, go ahead and type those in the chat panel and we'll get to those while Meredith's still in the database. The second question here, when clicking on the indicator to show providers, I only see a graph of the facilities instead of the providers. Did I miss something? No, that just varies. So the first one that I went into actually was the same thing. So it varies per um, KPI. You might not be able to see, and unfortunately there's not really a list, um, but there not every KPI has the ability to see um, it filtered down by provider. And usually it's one like that, sorry, Caitlin, usually it's one like the unlocked encounters, um, things that are, you know, that they, they really want to stress that it's per provider, that you are able to see it. Okay. And then the only other question I see here is how does the alert, how does the alert look? Do we have an example of what that looks like? Oh, or? yes, thank you. I actually wanted to go into that. I appreciate that question very much. Okay. Um, so the alert is actually a little bit, it's a little bit bland, um, but it does show you how many you currently have. So this is my administrator user. Um, so if I go back to this KPI value alert that I have for telephone encounters, and I just open up the message, it just tells you, so this is, it's telling you that it's for this particular measure, the current value is nine and you want your threshold to be, um, you know, less than one. So our telephone encounters are eight more than what it should be, even though that's showing a little bit backwards. Okay. No and there is a, oh, go sorry. ahead. Mary. Well, I was just gonna say, so from this, if you wanted to create an action from yourself, maybe you don't really, you know, monitor telephone encounters, but maybe you have one of your um, one of your office staff really is supposed to be taking care of those telephone encounters. Maybe you want to create a new action to assign it to them, which you can do from that M Jelly Bean. And basically, it includes all of the measure report that you just received. But of course, you can add something here that maybe makes it a little bit more sense. Like, hey, we have nine open telephone encounters, and this number should be, you know, at four for the day and assign it to whatever staff member is designated to, to take care of those actions. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know you could yes. do that in there. Yep. Uh, the next question is, can I drill down on the system configuration to see who those 18 individuals who have access to? Example, delete prescription after reconciliation. Right, and I don't believe you can um, because when you hover over that, it only shows you know what it is. However, with the name of it, 
you can simply, so this one is permission to delete Rx after reconciliation. So you can get into sec your security settings. I know it's a few extra clicks, which we don't want. Um, but with that name, at least, you can go to by searching by security attribute. And from here, we can, you know, look at permission to delete Rx. Oh, man, it's I wonder if it's going to be named something else. One of the problems, which I'm sure you all are aware of, is sometimes um, naming is a little bit different within each of these screens. So this one is, it is a little odd. So it's delete Rx in med reconciliation, all as one word. Um, so it takes a little bit, you know, of that quote unquote Google power where you have to um, query down by certain fields. But if you search Rx, you know, it's a relatively short list. And then you have that allow user to delete Rx in medication reconciliation. And we can see our 18 users here from this screen. So again, a little bit convoluted, but it, there is at least a pathway. And by having the name, it does help significantly. All right, the last question I can see here is in regards to whether there's any support in helping a practice clean these up and then utilizing this tool going forward, I guess like from eClinical Works or even if that's something that we would be able to offer. That's definitely something that I would be ecstatic to help with um, because each of these you guys, I mean, you guys know there are different different workflows, different pathways that we can optimize to assist with most of these features. Um, but Caitlin, that's something that we certainly offer. I don't know of anything from ECW corporate directly, but it's definitely something that our trainers would be um, ready and able to assist with, as well as you know helping clean up this dashboard and assigning people to monitor it more fully. All right, great. Well, that's all the questions that I see coming in right now. Awesome. Um, well, I just wanna say thank you all for joining. I know this was a little bit shorter of a presentation. Um, just a couple of key things, again, I wanted to point out with the safety and compliance dashboard is it is an administrator type feature. So we want to, you know, kind of keep it limited to our, maybe your billing manager, um, your ECW manager, as well as your administrator in the system. And there is that security setting to minimize your staff that are allowed into it as well as remember there's an item key. So if you want to, if you have this safety and compliance dashboard, but you're like, I can't set a target field using this little settings gear, that is an item key. So if you're supported by ECW, put in a case and I can actually get you one second. I have the item key name. Um, it's a little bit odd. Give me one second and I can tell you that. So the item key, the key code, so if you get, put in a case with ECW and tell them that you want item key code 4110 underscore V-A-O-S-P-C. And Caitlin, can I type that into the, I guess that might have been easier. I can send a message to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I think you should be able to put that in the chat and then we can include that in the follow-up email too so everyone has it. Perfect. Okay, I just sent that item key code out and again, that's to be able to set those target ranges per KPI. Perfect, thanks Meredith. Yeah, is there, is there anything else you wanted to touch on here? Otherwise, we can go ahead and wrap up the webinar a little bit early. Um, I don't think with the safety and compliance dashboard, really it's a matter of just, you know, maybe making it your, your first check in the morning to kind of look at those and to see what your settings are, if there's any particular, I know we mentioned particular providers who need um, to lock their notes or you know to manage other other medications or referrals whatever it may be um, but i definitely recommend you know making the safety and compliance dashboard something that's on your daily checklist even if you only get into it for you know five minutes um, you can at least take a look there 
and address a few things a day instead of having them build up over time and then it becomes unmanageable. But it is a, it's a really nice analytical feature for your administrators in the system. Um, and as Caitlin mentioned, we're gonna be highlighting a couple of more of these dashboards that ECW has been making um, you know, good, good progress in, in managing those KPIs because everything is a metric these days and, and um, it does become a little bit tedious when you have to dig and query for all of your material instead of having it on a dashboard. So really utilize these dashboards. Um, and like I said before, we are willing and ready to help if you have any additional questions in setting it up and in following up on all of these KPIs with your practice. And we actually had one more question come in. So I'm gonna sure. throw this one over to you. Can the system administrator see all providers or how do you select what providers you view? The system administrator will be able to, everybody actually with access to the safety and compliance dashboard will by default see those providers and they'll only show if they have measures. So on my unlocked encounters dashboard, I have some other, we have some other test providers in our system and with this, we're going to go into, this is our biggest facility, um, fake facility, of course, in the system. But we actually have more providers than this in the system, but they don't have any unlocked encounters. So the data will aut automatically update to display those providers that it's applicable to. All right, great. I think that really that wraps up all the questions some really great questions so thank you and some great feedback um, regarding the safety and compliance dashboard so i guess we'll go ahead and wrap up early um, don't forget we are meeting again next thursday on september 17th at 11 a.m central so same time we're going to talk about the mips dashboard and the provider hub and then we'll wrap up our series on the 24th with PM analytics and an, uh, kind of an intro to EBO. So we're really excited about those two webinars coming up. When we close out of this one, a short survey is gonna pop up so you can send us recommendations on other topics you would like to see us present on and just let us know how we did today. Um, all of that feedback is super, super helpful. So thanks again for joining. Thank you so much, Meredith. This was really fun and very helpful. Awesome, thanks, Kate, and thank you, everyone. All right. Take care and stay safe, everybody. Bye.